Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my signature online coaching program, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. If you would like to learn more about my program and see if you're a good fit for enrollment, please schedule a free confidence clarity call at irresistibleicing.com slash call. The link is also in the show notes. Welcome back to the Irresistible You podcast. If you're a longtime listener, if you're new here, hello and welcome. Today, what I'm going to be talking about is body image as it relates to um, postpartum. That is what I am personally going through at the moment. As of today, I am six weeks postpartum with my second child and my last child. (laughs) And, um, I have definitely been through a roller coaster of emotions over the last six weeks. For those of you that don't know my whole story, you can go back to the previous episode where I shared my postpartum story and all of the complications that I have gone through. And now that I am getting back into a groove, getting back into a schedule, getting back to work and getting just bringing back some of that normalcy to my life, it's time for me to now tackle also the weight and the body image. You know, sometimes when we are just in straight up survival mode, weight kind of takes a back seat. And this podcast is the place where we talk about, you know, issues around weight and body image and confidence. And while I was going through everything I went through over the last couple of weeks, you know, my active weight loss journey has not been my core focus because my core focus literally has been survival mode of myself and taking care of my kids and just trying to, you know, soak in that newborn time, be there for my family and get us through that very difficult time. Those first couple months, which I'm still in it, I'm not out of it by any means, but those first couple of months are, um, there's a lot of joyful moments, but it's also really hard. And I had a moment last week where I just kind of hit a wall and I emotionally feel ready to jump back into actively losing weight, to taking better care of myself, and to feeling healthy and strong again. And I just want to tell you, whether you're going through postpartum or not, whether, you know, this applies to anyone if you've had any type of a weight gain, but when you're going through something difficult emotionally in your life and you're in that survival mode phase of things, that just becomes your priority. And it doesn't mean that you don't care about yourself. It doesn't mean that you're not ready to put yourself as a priority eventually. But sometimes other things just have to take a back seat, and that's okay. And last week, I, you know, as I'm bringing my head out of the fog and looking up again and saying, okay, now how do I continue to move forward? How do I feel like myself again? How do I get healthy again? How do I get strong again? How do I feel good in my own skin again? And I was kind of in a low place um, body image wise. And I also, I, I almost hesitated to share this with you guys because my job here is to teach. It's to teach you how to lose the emotional weight, how to feel confident and how to feel good about yourself. And, you know, I didn't want to bring any negativity and doom and gloom here to the podcast. But as I started thinking about it, I'm like, no, we're not going to sugarcoat anything because, you know, even when you're someone like me who does this type of work for a living, who has dedicated her life to helping other women see their potential to pull out their confidence, to help them get through their emotional weight issues. I still struggle too. You know, and that's someone who has done the work, who continues to do the work, who has this at the forefront of her mind. I still have my struggles. And I want you to know that because if you have what you feel like is a, 
is a slip up or you slide backwards or you regress, I want you to understand that this is normal and it's part of the journey. The body that we have fluctuates. The body that we have goes through changes. Whether you never lose or gain another pound through the aging process, you're just going to have changes in your body that you have to adapt to. But what matters most is that you have a rock solid core where you have this foundation that you can love and respect yourself unconditionally no matter what's going on. And I think for me, I know that I have that, but it doesn't mean I don't go through these same feelings. These feelings are normal. You know, especially coming out of a pregnancy and all the hormone changes and all the physical changes and all the weight gain and and just putting yourself on the back burner for a while and then realizing, hey, I'm still here too and I need to be the best version of me because I deserve that, because I love myself and respect myself enough that I want this for me, not because I hate myself, not because I hate what I see, but because I love myself enough to know I deserve better. And so I caught myself last week um, having these feelings, feeling kind of low about myself. And one of the things for me that is very therapeutic, it's why I do the work that I do, it's how all of this started in the first place years ago, as I just started writing, I started writing a letter to myself and I call this the letter to my fat postpartum body. So what I would like to do is share this letter with you and I want to read it um, as I'm telling it to my body and the feelings that I'm having and then I'm going to share with you after what my plans are going forward and how I plan on dealing with everything and navigating through my my postpartum journey into my active weight loss journey again, and I want to be able to share that with you as well. So here we go. Covered in spit up, after three projectile vomits in a row, I caught a glimpse of you as I walked past the window to go upstairs to grab a fresh burp cloth. I was horrified. I didn't even recognize you. This new non-stop aching in my back and my hips and my joints. It is excruciating. The C-section gut and the stomach left behind feels like a fat suit that I just want to rip off right now, but I can't. All I can feel is my huge protruding gut that's hanging a little too close to my lady parts these days. But at the same time, the skin is literally numb from the incision that's still healing. My stomach and my boobs look and feel like pizza dough. And what waistline? My once hourglass shape now just looks and feels like one big blob of leftovers. And my face? My face looks like it was stung by a bee and simultaneously aged 10 years, what feels like overnight. I could pack for a round-the-world cruise with these bags under my eyes, and even my hair texture has changed. Is that really a thing? Oh, that's right. It's you. We meet again. My fat postpartum body. I remember you because I've been here before, but yet I also feel like a prisoner being held hostage. I don't belong here and I don't want to be here, but yet I don't have any choice in the matter. If I want to get away from you, it's going to take work. It's going to take me making new choices and different decisions. And I sure as hell didn't get here overnight. And I sure as hell won't escape you overnight either. And that feels defeating. Just like the sleepless nights that feel like they are never going to end. Being stuck here with you, it also feels like it's never going to end. 
I'm pissed off. And I feel angry that here I am having to do this again. I also know and take comfort in the fact that I've escaped you before. And I know that I have what it takes to do it again. It's like I've developed Stockholm Syndrome with food. And my fat body is the prison. I hate you. But yet... I have a psychological connection from all the years of abuse that we've taken together. Just like someone with Stockholm Syndrome, I find myself wanting to hang out with you, even though I know you're dangerous and you're the one making my life miserable. It's just that it's easier to drive around in my car with you to keep myself from going insane, stuck inside the house, as I'm learning how to navigate my new world. And mind you, this is the world that I planned for, and this is the world that I did ask for. This new world where I am navigating a four-year-old who never stops asking questions from sun up to sun down, and a newborn that needs every other ounce of energy that I have, And the energy that I don't even have in me to give. Not to mention, all of this is happening during a global pandemic, which has made motherhood even more isolating and harder than it's ever been. So yeah, it's comforting to swing into the drive-thru with two kids who are literally strapped into their seats, cannot run around, and cannot bother me. It's soothing to sit in a parking lot watching YouTube or catching up on podcasts and eating my comfort food for a moment of silence and quote unquote alone time. While one child is napping and the other is preoccupied with a screen. With each bite of fast food, I consciously make the decision to eat it, knowing that it's keeping me hostage here where I don't belong, where I don't want to be. It's a habit that I have to change. If I want to get out of this hostage situation, I know that I have to change. But right now, this is my wet blanket. And this just feels easier in the moment. Because at the end of the day, I have zero fucks left to give. And so it's easier to eat my emotions and get a sliver of so-called comfort, which, if we're being honest, is just misery in a mask. I don't want to be here in this body right now. I don't want to go through life in this body right now. But at the same time, I also don't want to do the work to negotiate my way out of this hostage situation, at least for now. (sighs) This isn't the body I started my pregnancy in. This isn't the body I started 2020 in. And sure, let's be real here. I didn't start this journey of getting pregnant in the perfect body, I didn't start my pregnancy journey even close to my goal weight. But I wasn't fat, fat when I got pregnant. I wasn't obese. I wasn't miserable. I wasn't uncomfortable. My joints and my body didn't ache. And I sure as hell didn't feel like a prisoner in my own skin. But now, I don't recognize the carnage that was left behind. And sure, I got my beautiful, healthy, perfect baby boy out of this. And I will forever be grateful for both of my children. And I can be grateful for my children while also not loving what they've left behind as a result. Because what is left behind right now, it's unrecognizable. It's just like when there's a hurricane And everything around you, including your home that you are 
it, your home, which is your safe place, right? It's just like after a hurricane when everything around you is damaged. But now the sun is shining again. It looks like nothing ever happened around you. And you're left to figure out how to pick up the pieces. That's what it feels like. Because when you're pregnant, you reach this point where your skin starts to glow. Your hair grows longer and thicker than ever. And everyone that you see that you don't even know gives you this knowing look. As if they're communicating with their eyes to welcome you to the motherhood club. To look at you as if to say, I get it. And you become the center of attention around your family, your job, your doctor, shit, even perfect strangers. The pregnancy does what it does. It does whatever the fuck it wants to your body. It does whatever it needs to do to get you to that day of delivery. And you let it because you know It'll all be worth it at the end. And it is. And when that baby finally comes out and you can finally breathe a breath, a a sigh of relief, you can finally breathe this sigh of relief that that baby is here. And the ultrasounds, they were right. He is healthy. He is perfect. And he's here and he's yours. That perfect round belly that you once had you know that moment in pregnancy where you know all the fat rolls just kind of blend together and now you've got this hard round belly and it looks super cute and you no longer just look like the fat girl you look pregnant and you're no longer ashamed of your body and your stomach you no longer feel the need to suck it in or hide the belly that you've probably resented and hated your entire life Well, that perfect round belly, it's now sagging like a sad, deflated balloon three days after the party has ended and the guests have gone home. Your body has been abandoned and now it's just you in there and it's a fucking dumpster fire and nobody really cares how you're doing anymore. All the focus, including your own, as it should be, is on that beautiful little baby and you've taken a back seat. Those perfect strangers that used to give you those knowing looks, well now strangers, they have no idea that you birthed a baby just a few weeks ago. They have no idea that you are literally walking around with a wound in your abdomen that is still freshly bleeding and healing. And so they make judgmental assumptions and looks that you're just some lazy, obese person who doesn't give a fuck about their health, that you're just some fat, lazy bitch that gave up on herself a long time ago. And they think, ugh, this is just who you are, and you've always been this way because they are meeting you this way. They don't know you any other way in that glimpse of time. And everybody else just expects new moms to bounce back. And you know what the truth is? The truth is that new motherhood is a fucking shit show. And you're trying to navigate your life with a new baby while also healing your body from doing a ton of work for the past nine months. And while you're navigating life with this new person who depends upon you, you're still a patient yourself. (laughs) But now you're swamped with this new responsibility while also trying to navigate and fight against the current, searching for just a glimmer of your old life. I get it. And it's exhausting. What I also want to say here and I want you to hear this, it's normal. Welcome to the fourth trimester. And we really need to stop acting like pregnancy ends on the day you deliver the baby. Because the truth is, it doesn't end on that day. 
it goes on. And the fourth trimester, it's a bitch. And we need to give women more credit and more support and more recognition as we're going through this. And that is why I do what I do. And I literally teach women how to lose the emotional weight, how to gain confidence in themselves, and how to ditch the body image bullshit. So I, more than anybody, I know what to do, and I know how to do it, and I'm here to tell you that I will do it. But for right now, right now, I'm just having a moment with the inner fat bitch, and that is okay. It is okay to have these thoughts. It is okay to have these conversations with yourself. And I'm allowing myself to have that conversation with her and to hear what's coming up for me. To not gloss over it, to not numb it out, to not be in denial of what's really going on. It's important that we acknowledge the inner fat bitch thoughts because once you acknowledge her, then you get to make a decision on what you're going to do with it. And so you either get to decide that you're going to continue to stay in denial, you're going to continue to zombie walk through your life, ignoring all the thoughts that you're having, shoving them down with food, getting terrified anytime they come up for you. And if you continue to do that, then you get to stay hostage. I choose to no longer be a hostage to the inner fat bitch. I choose to punch that bitch in the throat. Why? I just gave birth. My body just did a miraculous thing. What's left over from this? I can change that. This is temporary. And I know, I know that my body is not a dumpster fire. It is not disgusting. And I am not worthless just because I'm not in my ideal body at this moment in time. My body is miraculous. And I am and will be my same irresistible, awesome, fabulous fucking self whether I'm 250 pounds or 150 pounds. And I logically know how to lose the weight. And I know that I will lose the weight. And so what I'm doing is I'm giving myself some grace. I mean, Jesus, it's only been six weeks. I also need to remind myself that I had these severe postpartum complications. I was in survival mode. I was in one appointment after the other, after the other, just trying to get through life to keep these little ones alive, to keep myself alive, to keep everybody fed. And I'm just now coming out of that fog. So I had to give myself that time to heal and to tackle all of the obstacles that were thrown at me. And now that I feel like the fog is starting to, to settle a little bit, I'm now ready to put myself first again. I'm ready to tackle the physical weight. I have this little glimmer of myself um, that I can see and that I can feel that's ready to feel like herself again. And I'm ready to get back there. Because here's the deal. Here's the reality. I have too much to lose in my life to give up now. I have too much to lose to let the inner fat bitch tell me that I'm a worthless piece of shit just because I'm not in my ideal body right now. You better believe that I deserve to love myself unconditionally. You better believe that I deserve to have and create the life I crave, the life that I know I'm meant to be living. And I'm not going to let some extra weight or some extra skin hold me back from all of my goals and dreams. Because weight, weight gain is temporary. Weight gain will pass 
you get to make a decision whether you stay here or whether you break free. And so what I want to say to my fat postpartum body is I want to say thank you. Thank you for the gift of my two beautiful children. I love you. And I thank you for allowing me to go through this experience, not just once, but twice. I thank you for allowing me to have these two beautiful children in my life. And for that, I will forever be grateful because this body, while it may not be perfect and while it may not look the way I want it to look right now, it got me where I am today. Every breath, every child, every Everything that I've been through, this body got me here. Whether it was at my highest weight or my lowest weight, it got me here today. And I will forever be grateful for that. And I can be grateful while also wanting change. And it doesn't mean I hate myself. And there's a big difference. Because I love myself and my life enough that I want to be better. And not just because I want to look a certain way or fit into a certain size. I've reached a point, you guys, where I am physically not feeling good in my skin right now. I don't like the way I feel. I feel tired. My joints hurt. Um, my even I put my boots on the other day and they're feeling tight. Um, around my legs. I really literally pretty much have nothing to wear at the moment. And I don't like that feeling. I want to feel good in my skin. I want to feel comfortable. I want to feel healthy. I want to be able to do things physically. And right now, I just don't feel that I'm able to do certain things. And I know based on my own experiences with weight, that if I don't make this a priority... I will continue to gain weight. I will continue to become, um, I'm not even sure what the right word is, but I will, I will put myself in a place where I won't be able to do certain things physically, and that is not okay for me. That is not the definition of an irresistible life for me. And so, you know, I shared the letter with you that I wrote to my, my body, and, um, I'm going to also be sharing with you all my journey as I get back into active weight loss. I want to share with you the ups and downs and the feelings and the thoughts and how I am navigating this and how I'm going through it because I'm at the place where I'm mentally and emotionally ready to do it. And what's really empowering to me is to know once I reach the goal weight that I that I want to be or the ideal size that I want to be, I don't have to ever do this again as far as the active weight loss component. But what I have to do the rest of my life, and I want you to really hear this for those of you that continue to cycle with yo-yo dieting and just going for that, like I just have to get to this milestone or I just have to lose this amount of weight or I just have to get to my goal. What I really want for you to hear well, I don't have to do active weight loss the rest of my life. What I do have to do the rest of my life is learn how to recognize and shut down the inner fat bitch. Because she's not going to go away just because I can fit in a size 10. What I have to do the rest of my life is feel confident in the skin that I have. And confidence doesn't just show up because you're a size 10. What I have to do the rest of my life is learn how to like myself. Because if you don't like yourself, no amount of weight is ever going to make you feel like you've reached this destination. You're never going to feel at home in your own body. And what I have to do the rest of my life is have 
an identity outside of being the fat girl, to have an identity outside or a hobby and an identity outside of binge eating and watching Netflix for days at a time. That's not a hobby. That is not a hobby. That is the gateway to not liking yourself. What I have to do the rest of my life is take pride in my appearance, regardless of what size I am, to practice self-care, to do the things for me that make me feel good about myself. I have to make good choices with food the rest of my life, but also not deprive myself of cake and cheesecake and all the things that I love, because I will never do that. I will never restrict myself. So I have no intention of losing weight with restrictive bullshit fad diets that block out certain food groups. My goal is to lose weight eating cake and cheesecake and french fries and also salads and vegetables. It's called balance. It's called moderation. So... I am going to be sharing more of my journey with you all um, here on the podcast, here on my social media. And I want you to understand as your takeaway that this is not about getting to a destination. This is about changing your life for good. This is about this is about going from, you know, back in the day years ago where I would just get on the quickest fad diet to see if I could get off 20 pounds by a cruise or an event or whatever. And then as soon as that event was over, I'd go right back to doing the same shit that I always did. And I'd gain it back. And, oh, why did this happen to me? Because I never learned how to lose the emotional weight. I never learned or recognize that I was numbing myself out with food. I never realized I was pushing down emotions with food. I never learned how to even hear the inner fat bitch and what she was saying to me. I just thought I was worthless, that I was this just just the fat girl who deserved what she got. And that's not true. And it's not true for you either. So Are you going to hear negative thoughts about yourself? Yes. But the difference becomes you being self-aware enough to say, I hear you, but I don't believe you. I hear you telling me that my body is disgusting, but I no longer believe that to be true. And here's what I do believe about myself. You know, and that's, I think that's why so many women struggle with weight and yo-yo dieting is you have been led to believe that there's this magic destination that you're going to just arrive at when you lose your weight and that you never have to do the work again. And that is why it is so important when you do embark on a weight loss journey that you do it in a way that you're willing to do the rest of your life. I'm not going to lose weight by cutting out cake for the rest of my life because that's just ridiculous. I'm also not going to lose weight by eating cake seven days a week. So I have to find the right balance for me. And so... Yeah, that's just what I wanted to share with you guys today. This has been my um, kind of my my reset that I am back in the, you know, back on my weight loss game, trying to actively lose weight again, putting myself first, because as the time has gone by on the last six weeks, rightfully so, I haven't been the priority. <laughs> and sometimes in your life, that's just the way things go. That is a season of life. And so, you know, if you can recognize that and give yourself some grace and some forgiveness that right now, other things are just taking priority and that you will find your way. Um, And I'm saying this, and so what it doesn't mean, what it doesn't mean is that you can only lose weight when things are perfect. That is not what I'm saying at all. But sometimes when you're just trying to keep your head above water, 
That's what you have to do. And I am still, you know, I'm still going through it. I am still in the postpartum phase. I am still going through the sleepless nights. I am still trying to figure out how the hell I balance two kids, a dog, a house, a business, and having a life during a pandemic. I'm still trying to figure out what that looks like. I'm still trying to figure out how to get a good night's sleep when I'm only sleeping a few hours at a time. So I am nowhere near this perfect place right now. But I feel like I've, I have made it past, past the survival mode where I literally was in survival mode of like, what is even going to happen to me? And I, for my own personal mental health and physical health, I need to start doing the things, living by my irresistible you principles that I know are proven and that I know work so that I can start to feel like Amy again. Because I am not going to spend my time feeling miserable and uncomfortable in my own body, in my own life, because I wasted too many years doing that. And so the thing is, I can recognize when those things are coming back. And that was what was starting to creep back into the corners. Um, Those dark corners were starting to come back into my life. And I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, ain't nobody got time for this, you know? And so you have to do what you have to do. And I'm looking forward to sharing more of my journey with you as I go through this, as I start to, you know, get back on the irresistible you track and feel like myself again. So I hope that you will continue to listen. I hope you will subscribe. If you haven't, make sure that you do subscribe to the podcast using whatever podcast app you're on right now. You can hit subscribe and also get notified every single time there's a new episode. You can also follow me and keep up on Instagram. I am at Irresistible Icing. That is probably the best place to connect with me outside of the podcast. You can DM me there. You can message me. And I I also share a lot of things going on behind the scenes when new podcast episodes are coming out um, and all of that. And if you want to get a jump start and also learn how to lose the emotional weight, how to feel confident in your body again, then what I want you to do is sign up for a free confidence clarity call at irresistibleicing.com slash call. You will get access to my calendar where you can pick a date and time and we together will figure out if my signature coaching program is a good fit for you as well. And if it's a good fit, I will extend an invitation for you to enroll. Thank you guys so much for listening. I will catch you in the next episode. Until then, stay irresistible. Bye guys.